folks, welcome to the Seven Figure Network Podcast. My name is Melford Bivens. Today I'm joined by Dan Aldridge, and I'm so happy to have him on today because he is from England. And as you know, we end up interviewing folks from all around the globe, but lately we've been talking to a lot of Americans. So talking about Americans trying to go internationally, I'm really excited to talk to Dan about what's going on with them right now, how they're building. Uh, one of his mentors is actually somebody I know, so I'm really excited to get going with this stuff. Dan, thanks for being on the show today, but I really appreciate it. Thank you so much, Malford. It's an honor and a privilege to be here. So thank you for having me. Uh, no, no, it's my honor indeed. So, so do me a favor. Tell me what drove you into the industry in the first place. Yes. Yeah, so I um, got involved in network marketing seven years ago. Um, at the age of 25, um, somebody offered me the opportunity. And uh, at the time, I was a joiner, a carpenter and joiner. So working in the construction industry, in a in a workshop making you know products windows doors stairs wardrobes furniture for people who could afford bespoke furniture mm -hmm. so i saw a lot of um upper class wealthier people who could afford bespoke furniture and i was working in their houses but i was never going to be one of those people who could mm -hmm. afford any bespoke furniture and um, so I, I i had a taste of you know how the others live um but i uh I was just on, on a path of being a construction worker, working nine to five. Um, and yeah, that's when someone offered me an opportunity to make an extra income. I was dissatisfied in that job. Um, I was unfulfilled. Um, I was coming home at the end of each week, exhausted. And at the end of each month, I had no money. As you know, as everyone knows how the nine to five world works, you know, I was that guy living for the weekends on the hamster's wheel of life, one holiday a year. And uh, yeah, I, I wanted more. I, I I had more inside of me. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I had goals. I had dreams. I had ambition. I had work ethic, but I didn't have the right vehicle to apply that to. Mm -hmm. So when I did get offered the opportunity of network marketing, of course, as every man is, I was very skeptical. Um, I went along to a, an offline meeting where I sat in the back of the room with my arms crossed thinking, what is this? I, I'd never experienced anything like this before in my life. And I saw the products. Mm -hmm. They ticked a big box for me. I saw the compensation plan. I saw the numbers um, of duplication and multiplication. And I just said, you know what? even if I just make an extra one to 200 pounds a month doing this, mm -hmm. it's an extra one to 200 pounds a month. I wouldn't have doing carpentry, but little did I know it, the, the business set me on fire. It gave me a, a mission in my life. It gave me purpose in my life. And I fell in love with everything, um, especially after I went to my first event, mm -hmm. which really opened my eyes for me. So I was someone who was not, not really open-minded for opportunity, but more desperate to change my current situation. Yeah. Um, and when this, this opportunity um, presented itself to me, I said, let's have a look. And I, I took a look at it from an open, op open mind. And um, seven years on, here I am. You know, this is my career now. So it's changed my life. And how long ago did you quit your uh, normal job and go full-time into network marketing? I did it after just over a year. Um, but, but I wouldn't advise that uh, <laughs> Thank <simply you. laughs> because I, I did it too early. I actually quit my job before the business was making me, um, the same money as my carpentry income, yeah. but I was just so miserable. And I knew because of the business, what you get out, what you put in is what you get out. I knew that if I could apply my carpentry work ethic to this, I could smash this business. So I, I quit my job on the Christmas of that year um, and I worked at this business harder than I've ever worked anything in my entire life. And I built my income up from, can I say my numbers? Oh yeah, go ahead, please. I built my income up from um, 700 pounds a month with my network marketing business to 2000 pounds a month in 90 days. Wow. So I completely replaced my full-time income with this and then onwards and upwards from there. But those 90 days still to this day, I still try and work as hard as I did back then. Mm -hmm. But I honestly, I, I, I believe I was the hardest working guy in the company. I was at my desk from 7am to 11pm for 90 days, just on it, absolutely on it. And, it, and those, those 90, that 90 days I was doing back then, I'm still getting paid for today because mm -hmm. of the people I introduced and the customers I enrolled. 
wild. So do me a favor and tell us what, what did you do during those 90 days? I mean, I know that everybody doesn't want to be the most psychotically driven person on the planet, but <laughs> some people are going to want to. <laughs> so some people are cool with being psychotically driven. So do me a favor. What, what did you actually do during those? Because you more than doubled your business. Mm. I mean, and that's the beautiful part about this industry is that scales. You know, you could be doing 10 grand a month and double to 20 grand a month. I mean, this, this doubling thing doesn't matter what rank you're in. It just matters the drive and what you do. So what did you actually do during those 90 days? I just took massive action on the income earning activities. So in my business, we get paid to get new customers and we get paid to um, bring in team members and help them succeed. Okay. So what I did was I assigned a room in my house as my office. I put a big um, piece of white, um, like whiteboard stuff mm-hmm. on my wall and every single team member I got, I'd write them up and it would, I would make it my mission to help them be successful. Mm-hmm. So over the 90 days, uh, my team grew and I had about maybe five or six, seven frontline and a couple of them were progressing and recruiting and duplicating. Mm-hmm. And that was when I started to get some depth in my business for the first time. Um, so to complete, to be completely honest with you, for those 90 days, I was doing nothing except for pitching people um, pro- pro- or prospecting, as you might say. And I was posting on social media to attract people to me. And I was also networking online. Um, so I was speaking to people mainly on Facebook back then, but now it's a lot more Instagram as well. Um, but I was going absolutely nuts. And my, my team at the time, um, that w- they weren't, v- it wasn't very big. It was maybe 20 people at the time. Um, they were saying to me, Dan, how are you speaking to this many people? And it's because I would just sit there and if, if I could see someone was online or they were active, I would speak to them. So my, my inbox was just full. I, I couldn't keep up with people replying and it wasn't just pitching saying, do you want to join? Do you want to join? Do you want to join? It was relationship building. Mm-hmm. And I built l- tons and tons hundreds and hundreds of relationships in that first 90 days Mm -hmm. and out of the out of the group of people i was talking to i then sorted them out into they're not interested these are kind of interested and these guys are good to go and i focused on the people that were open-minded and did want the opportunity and from those people um they are now some of them are now my highest earners in my business um so yeah i was just i worked like a madman i just i i stopped to eat go to the toilet and sleep. That was the only times I stopped working. <laughs> oh, that's great. And are you still doing the same? Are you still using the same philosophy, the same tools, the same methodology now? I mean, obviously, you're not going like, you know, 400 hours a day to do it. But, you know, are you still doing basically the same thing you were doing during that big blitz? Pretty much, pretty much. My, 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 um, I set aside time each day to, to be doing those activities, because I think if you ever stop the income producing activities, that's when you stop leading by example. And that's when things, in my opinion, get a bit shaky. So you yeah. always have to be on the income earning producing activities. But mm-hmm. now a lot of my time is spent um, training my leaders. And, um, you know, it's not management mode stuff, because I know in the industry, it's a bit frowned upon. But I do have to be organizing events, organizing trainings, mm-hmm. um, and doing a lot of stuff behind the scenes that, like you say, will scale in the future. Um, so creating assets and creating tools for my team to use mm-hmm. as well. Um, but yeah, the 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 basics never change. And I will continue to do those basics forever more um, simply because, you know, we, we've got this in our office. This is the reason why we have a bell in our office. Every single time we get a sale, we ring the bell. Every single time we get a team member, we ring the bell. And the reason why we have this is because when that bell rings, that's the ka-ching. That's where the money's made. Yes. Okay. So we can spend all day, every day, creating fancy posts, you know, doing Zoom calls and things, but the money is made in the income producing activities. So in our household, if that bell isn't ringing very often, it means we're not working hard enough. I love it. I love it. Like Pavlov. <laughs> you got you to get exactly. the dog's mouth exactly. watering. <laughs> you got to <laughs> ring that bell. I love it. Hey, so w- you had already been building online when you first started and then the world changed. Everything got flipped upside down. All of a sudden, you know, these billions of people who were building belly to belly were now all online as well. So, you know, where your secret sauce was out there, then a whole bunch of other people were doing it. Did you see a decrease in your ability to build when everybody in the universe went online? Or was your system already in place to the point where you're just cranking along and doing your thing and, and numbers didn't change much? 
Do you mean for um, the, for the last COVID? few years where, where everybody kind of jumped, you know, it's like, cause, you know, with four or three years ago, a lot of people were just belly to belly. They didn't even try online. Yeah. Now, three years ago, everybody was online, the entire network marketing industry. Did, did that have much of an impact on your growth? Uh, massive, massive. My bit, my business um, grew by five or six times. Um, I, I can't even do the maths. Um, <laughs> it was huge. My, my business, uh, yeah, grew by five or six times. And it was because I was ready. Mm-hmm. Um, they say luck is when um, opportunity meets preparation. Yes. Um, and in January 2020, I had a beautiful team of leaders all in place with our systems in place mm-hmm. so that we we were there. We were ready for it. Yeah. And when we did go into lockdown and when everybody wanted an online opportunity and everybody wanted to, you know, invest in the products and, and get healthier themselves, mm-hmm. we were there and we 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 soaked it up, you know, we, uh, we took massive, massive advantage of the opportunity. Um, and you know, some, I could, I could say I was lucky, but there are also other people in the industry that I know that didn't have similar growth Correct. through the pandemic. So, um, yeah, I, I was in place for that. And, um, I think that's what, what's important. You know, you've always got to be ready. You've always got to be ready and you've always got to be willing to evolve and adapt through the times Yes. So now, actually now, I, this year is a ve- is a, a very much readjusting period where we're going back out offline again. Yeah, right. Things are starting to settle again. The world's been a bit of a, of a, of a crazy place. Um, and now things are really starting to, you know, move in, in a, in a, in a solid direction. Things feel a lot more stable now. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm, I'm excited for the next five years um, of, stable solid growth where everybody who joins the business will will build a beautiful long lasting business yeah love it hey uh you know let's talk about your explosive growth for one second i mean quadru- uh, quintupling <laughs> your your business in in that short amount of time is just insane doing a 5x um let's talk about retention because when you 5x your business obviously you got to make sure that, that 5x isn't falling out the back end again so what were you during you know what were you doing before the crazy growth and did you have to make any modifications for that crazy growth to keep your retention numbers up yeah so we we did a couple of what i would like to call as good moves if i'm not, if I'm not blowing my own trumpet Please. i think the the first good move we did was when we had a, a huge influx of new team members we were thinking this is a nightmare. How are we going to train all these new people? Right. So we we created a getting started website. Mm. So everyone mm. that joins our team now, we send them a link to a website. They get a password that, where they can log in. Mm. And then there's seven steps. Step one, step two, order your product. Step three, create your list. Step four, attend the trainings. So it's a, a seven step program now mm. that when people join, whereas before, each person that would join, we would have to do that back and forth with them. And if you're getting, you know, 10, 20 team members a month, it's almost unmanageable. So first of all, we created that system with the new starters website. Um, Second of all, we, before the growth, we used to do one or two training calls a week Mm -hmm. during the pandemic, during everyone working from home, we had five, no, four zoom calls a day. Wow. We had a morning call, a 10 o'clock call, a three o'clock call and a 7 p.m. call and each call was loaded simply because there was nothing else to do right <laughs> um and also it was a sense of community that it, mm-hmm. everybody in their homes were lonely so yeah. when each zoom call we did everyone would pile on and it would be it would be fun mm-hmm. and everybody was just winning and it was absolutely fantastic um but now the world's going back to normal people you know are all zoomed out um so we're going back to sort of a few zooms a week um, and that's what it's all about. You just got to adapt to what what the what the audiences are saying and what people are how people are feeling. Our business is very um, based upon you know um, reading the public. You know, if that makes sense. Well said. Now, I, yeah. I really appreciate the talking about the systemization. I mean, you and I just met, so we don't know each other too well. But uh, you know, that's always been what Conchet and I scream from the mountaintops. You got to have a system in place. You know, once a system's in place, everything else works. But there needs to be a it needs to be a website. It needs to be a place where people can go, watch videos at their pace, listen to things at their pace, do things at their pace. Yet, always have that community in place to drive drive them forward. So, I love that. Thanks so much. So, you guys are about to have a baby. 
I am so happy for you guys. It's fantastic. How do you think that is going to change your travel plans? Because I know like it's time, it's time to, to time to drop the gloves and get out there and start flying around the globe again. Is Are, are you guys excited for that? Are you going to be packing the baby in the plane? What, what's the game plan? Yeah. So I think that was one of the main reasons why we joined the business once we got a bit more in depth. Mm-hmm. You know, we did join initially for the extra income, but over the years of building the business and seeing other families in the business, we thought, wow, we could do that. You know, we could be that those parents that are always at home um, to be able to, you know, be there and care for the, our little one. But also, and this is my favorite thing about our business, we're going to be um, such great teachers for our, our baby and our, our child as they grow up in terms of mindset, attitude, um, willpower, and all, basically all the stuff that we don't get taught as children, we just sort of get thrown out into the world yeah. and we have to figure it out ourselves. Um, so I'm, I'm really looking forward to um, teaching our little girl when she arrives um, all of the you know amazing stuff that I've learned in the business so that she can shorten her learning curve and not have to figure it out herself. Yeah. Um, we're also going to be taking her everywhere um, <laughs> as long as much as we can um we're lucky that our both our parents are willing to be babysitters um so conventions and trips where we feel like it might be better to leave her at home then we've got that which is great yeah. but we're going to try and take her as much as we can simply to um give her the exposure to the world and show her what's out there and broaden her mind and you know hopefully let, let her dream big when she gets to that age you know so yeah everything we've been working towards for the first seven years is leading up to this moment. Mm -hmm. Um, So if I was to ever sort of write a book about my network marketing experience, I would definitely call the first seven years chapter one. And this zoom call, this zoom call actually is turning the page now onto the next chapter Oh, I love um, where we're going to be now be building a business as parents. Yes. Um, And I I feel like the desires and the fire burning within me is even going to burn brighter and higher than ever because I'm going to have an even more powerful reason why. Mm -hmm. Well, as a grandparent, I can assure you, your parents cannot wait to get their hands on that baby. (laughs) <laughs> I cannot spend enough time with my granddaughter, believe me. So you're going to be, you're going to have built-in babysitters like you can't believe because grandparents <laughs> die for baby time. Hey, are you and your wife working on the business together? I, I never even asked yeah. you that. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, I should have mentioned. Um, so me and um, my wife are the same position in the company. So I joined and then she signed under me as my team member. And we're both. Oh, good. Uh, so you guys have actually two separate lines. Yeah. Oh, good for you. Congratulations. Yeah. So we, dub- we doubled all the income and bonuses and things, which is. Yeah. What I meant to advised. Yeah. Yeah. D- double income. Boy, it, until you have it, you have no idea how good it is <laughs> you know, at that level. So, hey, uh, how much work are you doing internationally? Because I know, you know, it's again, you guys were very biased towards um, being online. Now that we're moving back offline again and, and trying to get out there, are you building a lot internationally? You're sticking more in Europe? What's, where, what's your build strategy? So my organization is naturally quite large in Europe. Um, we haven't actually done much offline events traveling abroad yet simply because we haven't been able to but definitely willing to Um, my mentor always told me to stay local and it will go global that's what he always used to say keep it local and it will go global and that's exactly what I've done Um, and now my business is in maybe 20 countries um, around the world Mm -hmm. and it's mainly because I have a fantastic leader in my business from Lithuania Mm-hmm. Um, and she has exploded into Europe massively. So when I say my business is in 20 countries, it's because of this Lithuanian leader who's wow. in majority of those countries, wow. um, like, you know, France or the Nordic countries, Spain, um, and yeah, Holland. I'm looking forward to when we can going out there and showing them the offline aspect of the business, which a lot of them haven't even um, experienced yet. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't that funny? that people who have joined in the last two, three years have no idea what we've been doing for the last 70. <laughs> it's just, just so yeah. funny to me. The, you know, and thankfully folks like you are smart enough to be online before everything happened. So there was no pivot. That was just a double down, you know, yeah. where some people had to completely restructure their businesses. So that, that leads me to my next obvious question. Uh, if you were to start again today, If you just got your kit today, what are one, two, three, four, however many things you want to talk about, but what would you tell somebody brand new starting today to have their fastest path to growth? I would do exactly what I did before. I would get online 
um, I would find my target audience in groups. Um, so I would look for people who have similar <laughs> interests and things in common with me. And I would um, open, I call it door opening, where you basically are almost starting chats with so many people that eventually from the chats, you can find out if they're, you know, happy with their income. Are they happy at their work or are they working on a health goal right now? Would they be interested in the products? Mm-hmm. So all I do is I build relationships with people and ask good questions. Mm-hmm. Um, and then once I find people that are maybe dissatisfied, like I was, then I say, well, maybe you might want to have a look at what I do, you know, and then people who are on a health journey, I say, well, you know, I've been taking this and it, I, I love it. I totally recommend it if you're open to it. Mm-hmm. So I would get, yeah, get in groups, start networking, asking good questions, posting about the opportunity and just basically I, I would do what I did in that first 90 days and just build a team working one person at a time, helping them duplicate, teaching them what I'm doing. Mm-hmm. Communication's key, you know, on the phone quite a lot to my team and just showing them what this business is all about Mm -hmm. and also building um, conference to conference is very, very, very important Um, because when I went to my first event, I went there with a, with a bad attitude thinking, what's this going to be like? You know, I I have no idea what I'm going to. And I walked out of the room saying, I'm going to smash this business. I'm going to get to the top position in this company. I'm going to be a top earner one day. Mm -hmm. Um, So I know the power of events so that's why when conferences happen, I am I am like a sergeant major trying to get all of my team members there because I know how it affected me. Um, so yeah, hook hook them online is what I like to say, and then cook them at convention um, where they can see the bigger picture. And uh, hopefully from then on, you know, if convention doesn't work, then I, then I can't help them because yeah. conventions are so important. But and, do, do me a favor, and I. It's for, again, talking to people who have just gotten started or even have been here for the last three years who could not attend a convention. You know, I mean, think about all the people that have been doing this for a couple of years now and had no ability to attend with these. Why are conventions so important? What happens there that lit you on fire? It's not even what happens. It's, it's the feeling in the room. Um, because when I first joined, I thought there wasn't many people doing this. I was skeptical if it was even legit. Mm-hmm. And it, I, as soon as I walked through the doors into the room and I, and the first one was a small one, it was 500 people. And I thought, wow, all these people here have signed up too, like me. Right. They're all franchise partners. Um, and then as time went on and I saw people on stage, you know, doctors talking about the science of the product, mm-hmm. um, top earners in the business talking about how it's changed their life. Yeah. My mouth was on the floor. I was just <laughs> gobsmacked thinking, this is incredible. I can't, I actually can't believe this world exists and I had no idea. Mm-hmm. Um, so it just opens all possibilities. You know, it allowed, it allowed me to dream again, to be honest. Wow. Um, all that ambition and all those goals that I had as a child and growing up got suppressed as I was a carpenter and it got stole from me. Mm-hmm. Um, and this business relit those fires and said, right, I could actually design my own life with this business. I could wake up each day and do what I want. Um, and and the, most imp- the most amazing thing is I could help other people do that. I, I could be the guy, I could be the guy that said, because of Dan, I can now live life on my terms. That's even better than living your own life on, on your own terms, I believe, giving the gift to other people. That's so great, man. It, just the fact that the words came out of your mouth, it let me dream again. Like, dude, I, I hope you understand how powerful those words are when you came out. Like, it really resonated with me for that second. Because again, man, I mean, think about what's going on now. You know, the great resignation, people not wanting to go back to work, you know, this, this incredible influx into our industry of folks who might have never looked at it before because they didn't, because they've lost scope of their dream. They got stuck in the nine to five or, or whatever else. So that's really powerful. Hey, do me a favor. Um, you know, in case somebody's watching this on their phone or, you know, listen to it on their, in their car, uh, what's the best way for folks to contact you personally? Yeah. So the best way is um, via my Instagram. Um, so my handle is at dan.aldridge underscore XXY. So dan.aldridge underscore XXY is on Instagram. Okay, beautiful. And uh, I already know part of this answer because you got a baby that's going to be popping out any second now, but I got to hear, what is your six month goal? Six month goal is is to help my leaders get to the top ranks. Um, Mm. I've got some amazing, amazing leaders right now who are, um, they they do have the fastest teams in the UK. 
Mm-hmm. And um, my goal is just, you know, my my mentor always said, work with the right people in the right areas at the right time. And these specific leaders in my business are on fire. So as a mentor, I'm just getting more wood and throwing it on the fire and making that fire as big and as awesome as possible. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm working with those guys to help them qualify through the positions. But again, I'm always ringing that bell. I would always be in the trenches, finding my own personal um, team members and helping them grow as well. So new lines, but helping my leaders um, continue their momentum to success. That was, that was such a good point. It's funny. That was plan- I was planning on making that my last question, but now I got to keep going because you made such a good point. You know, digging through your numbers to find the people who are being explosive, who are seeing explosive growth. Is, do you do that daily? Do you do you keep mm-hmm. going into your numbers and just saying, okay, I see that Mary is exploding. I got to talk to her. I see that John is doing X. Is that what you do to, to find these people that are getting that momentum going? Yeah. I, you know, if you look at the company leaderboards of ink top producers in our, in our company, I'm hardly ever on them. I'm not the top recruiter. I'm not the top salesperson. But the one place I do excel in this business is I'm a fantastic talent spotter. Mm. I, I, my, I've got fantastic observant skills. I can notice who is standing out from the crowd. I can notice who is putting the action in. And I, the one top tip I can say to everyone listening to this is, as a leader, this is my best line, I say to them, Go and get three to five team members, and I will do and an, of new team members, and I will do a new starters call for you. Mm-hmm. If you say this to everyone in your organization, right? Some of them will go and do that, and though, and some of them that do that, they are the people you work with. Yes, and right. that's what I say to everyone: go and get three to five, and we'll do a new starters call. You jump on a new starters call. You're training the newbies, but what you're really doing is edifying that leader and building relationships with that person and saying, right, I'm now going to work with you. You keep doing your thing. I will keep, you know, training and building your business and helping you succeed. And that's how that's how I build my business. I just work with the workers constantly whilst producing my own, um, you know, stuff. <laughs> Th- that, that was a platinum nugget. And I'm so glad that we led the conversation there. That's so good, man. That was that everybody needed to hear that. So Dan, I'll just thanks so much for being on today, man. I really appreciate it. You gave great tips. I'm so proud of you for the growth you got. And congratulations on the new baby. I'm so happy for you guys. Thank you so much, Melford. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks, Dan. Have a great day, bud. You too. Hey there. I hope you really enjoyed the show. And now I have a question to ask. Do you want to know how to build a seven-figure network with just three to five enrollments a month? That's just three to five conversations, not 30 to 50. That means we only have to convince three to five people to say yes to build a real seven-figure network. Scan the code or click the link at the bottom of this page now to discover the step-by-step method for exactly how you can add hundreds, if not thousands of customers to your downline by recruiting and enrolling businesses and health professionals onto your team that have hundreds of built-in customers that need your product or opportunity. Get the Seven Figure Network book now and let's start building massive volume with an enormous downline of businesses, health professionals, and customers.